Okay. How you are edifying, uplifting, educating your mind, and then they too will get the spirit and, and God will really see them tomorrow. Okay? Let's so take a few seconds. It's okay to take take this the the the, the shovel and put it on. And some of you I mean what they got. Uh, I'll try a lateral commission if people don't know that we have to research that. But at the end of the day, what happens is we're basically voting for a group of people who put us in subjugation in the first place. Mm -hmm. And through further further consciousness, we realize that we're basically asking for someone to get us out of something that they put us in in the first place. Uh -huh. So if we're really serious politically about making change, then we have to be able to accept the fact that at some point it's going to be time for us to make that own political change ourselves. Because as long as you're giving someone else power over you, then they can do whatever they want to mm -hmm. with you, regardless of who it is. Yeah. So all it is, you know, it's like the the, the soup of the month is Bernie Sanders. But in reality, Bernie Sanders is a Zionist like the rest of them. They're all connected mm -hmm. to the same bloodline, so mm -hmm. what is the point? What mm -hmm. are we really trying to do? They're just juggling us, and they're just deciding, okay, who's going to be the one to control black lives at this point? Mm -hmm. right. Thank you, buddy. Let me run. The political landscape, what's going on? What's, what's, your, what's your take on what's, what's happening now with this political thing? I thought, because I saw your Trump shirt up underneath the thing. I ain't got no problem with that. Just justify. Yeah, this is one that relates to the national political scene. Um, you know, once you have a certain understanding of electoral college and the different things, you know, how these candidates are chosen, um, I don't necessarily put that much weight into the various things that they say because I know all these people are lying. But with that being said, um, I s um, we have to be kind of careful whenever we say that I don't vote for president because a lot of people take that as I don't believe in voting at all. And um, we, we do believe in voting, and we but we believe more in focusing on the local elections, no. the local politics, the DAs, the um, city councils, things like that. And so... That's kind of where our focus has been um, in relation to this political season coming up right now. Because you know, a lot of people don't pay attention to. We pay attention to the presidential elections that happen every four years. But I mean, there are elections going on locally almost every year or every other year that um, I definitely feel are important. Okay, so you think local, positive, but local, everything positive for local. Thank you. Just a comment. My thunder. No. <laughs> you know, but I, just to piggyback on what you said exactly, I think we pay a lot of attention to uh, national politics. Uh, it has its place. Voting has its place. I think the problem is not so much with the way that um, our understanding of voting. I think we we misunderstand on like if I vote, that's all I have to do. Um, this is the only means of liberation. This is our only way out. This is the way out. It has its purpose. Um, but when you look at uh, national versus local, just like he said, uh, our DAs determine um, whether or not, I mean, basically, how many of us going to be locked up? Mm -hmm. And if they're locked up, for how long? Um, and what these, uh, where the money goes? Um, our local politicians, just, just now, I mean, just to bring it home, for example, Dwight Boykin uh, gave about $100,000. Y'all, check, fact check, you know, but since we bring it at home. Yeah. Uh, to police, to, to, to police to say that I'm doing something for the Southeast community, when that $100,000 could have been given to some community yep. leader or advocate mm -hmm. who are imparting wisdom, education, training, things for our youth. Um, so I think when we, you know, we, we, we focus on national politics or we think, you know, it, this is the most important thing. I just think we should get a little simpler, pay attention to what's happening at home. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the problem with our, I think our political ideas is that we're misinformed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Keep it here. Okay. Sister Nee says she votes regardless because of our ancestors. Brother Ali. Talked about just be mindful of what's going on in terms of the national and the Zionists and the, the real control. But I mean, Ron Long with Sister Sikanda said that, that, that politics is cool, but local politics, and even with Sister Sikanda said, after the vote, we still got to get up and do something in regards to that particular vote. Sister Zaza. Yeah, I'm 
kind of wrap that up in a bow for us in terms of your, the national perspective on that particular subject matter of voting. Uh, you, brother. Um, No. No, use use the Take those back to the Okay, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. If our ancestors died for us to have the right to vote, and we're voting but we still have no power mm -hmm. in spite of voting, then did our ancestors die in vain? Hmm. Oops. Uh oh. Mm. Uh oh. Oops. Mm. Mm. I'm, I'm here to break the mind up. Yeah, come on. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a builder, but we got to destroy some things. Mm. Everything that our ancestors died for, the lynchings, mm. all of the struggles and the pain that they went through, we have to learn from those lessons. Mm -hmm. We have to learn from our people actually being murdered for us to have the right to vote, mm. for us to turn around and continue voting in the name of our ancestors who died, but yet we still are not receiving any benefit yeah, from on. those actions. Yeah. Right? That's mm -hmm. counterproductive. Yes, mm. mm. I don't believe in voting. It makes sense. Okay. Mm. There's That's benefit good. in local elections, like the sister and the brother said. Prop 37 in California, where uh, they were trying to get genetically modified foods labeled. Mm -hmm. The people didn't show up for that, mm -hmm. and the, the uh, bill wasn't passed. So genetically modified food in California is not being labeled. Mm -hmm. Bills like that we should be in tune with. Yeah. In New York, there was a bill, I believe, last year, a brother, I want to say in the Nation of Islam, was pushing to have federal uh, felons not have to check off that they are felons on, on job applications to be able to, um, you know, Get hired. Mm -hmm. And that's something we can get behind. Mm -hmm. Those folks were striked by? Yes. Yeah. There's something like that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Those are things that we can get behind. Mm -hmm. But our power is not going to be in going to the same system that is oppressing us and expecting these benefits. Right? Okay? Mm -hmm. You will see entertainers like Diddy rock the vote, right? Came out for Barack Obama. Now he's saying there's no power in voting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Russell Simmons just uh, came out supporting Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. You're going to see Beyonce in a few days come out supporting Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. This is where you see how black entertainers and athletes are being used. Mm -hmm. They're pawns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're rich pawns, but they're pawns. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. so we have to be mindful of that. We have to be able to come together and have a conversation and talk about it and not dismiss what we are saying as being a hater. We're either working for our people or we're not. Yeah. Mm. All right? Uh, and Wally McKay, Bomani Baruti said, democracy is uh, a trick to make you think that you have a hand in your own oppression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is the ele electoral college? Mm -hmm. I hear that thrown around. You know, we say it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. What is it? Yeah. What does it really mean? It means that they get all of these millions of people together, rally them up. You get all excited, you feel good, you're passionate, <coughs> passionate about it, you feel like you have a hand in what's taking place in this country. Hmm. They tally all the numbers. Hmm. It's all electronic now, so we don't yep. even know what the real number is. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then they have a group of people that none of us have no idea. Anybody hmm. ever met anybody in the electoral college? Mm -hmm. Nope. No. Nope. You know nope. anybody in your family? In <laughs> I'm still nope. waiting to meet somebody with this Nielsen rating. <laughs> <laughs> now there's nobody with the Nielsen rating. Exactly. Yeah, you never know who they TV, are. You nobody know. got a news right. for the ratings. You'll so never know. We say, you know, well, the Electoral College, we understand that there is a group of people from somewhere in the United States that once the population vote comes together, they say, okay, we're going to lean it this way or we're going to lean it that way. Mm -hmm. That means your vote doesn't count. Yeah. Yep. That's true. We need to be teaching our people that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Come on. And she's going to go more about that tomorrow when she she's going to go more about that particular part tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Indeed. All right. Indeed. All right. But I'll leave. But, I, but let me stress local voting. No. There's, there is, mm. we can make change with that, but that is not the end all be all. That's a small step towards what we need to be doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. But I'll leave. When you talk about this activism, many of us here are just more than just talking about this activism. It's going to get into a male-female dynamic here. I'm going to go through, I'm going to go through the brothers and I'm going to go through the sisters. How come, Brother Ali, I'm looking at, and it's kind of um, transitioning from what we see nationally, but 
in the national scene when they had the, the, a lot of the, the Black Lives Matters, a lot of the different things where you see um, conflict and things along those lines, you see the women, mm -hmm. the ones that seem to be out front. Mm -hmm. Come on. But Ali, but I'm, where are the brothers? Y'all here, that's why they are. Where are the brothers at? And are the women, uh, why are the women out front? Where are the brothers at in this activism in regards to what's taking place as far as our particular community? Truthfully, a lot of our men have been effeminized to a point of racism. That's our reality is that the, the, the perception is that our sisters were just basically sitting at home and cooking grips all day. <laughs> When in reality, they were always by our side and fighting for us, a lot of times fighting stronger than us. Um, you've always had, on the, on the male side, you've always had male warriors, which in the 60s, 50s and 60s, were teachers from Malcolm X, from Mega Evers to Elijah Muhammad, you know, and the likes of, of course, of Dr. King. These were warriors that put themselves in position to know that at some point, I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. So I better sacrifice self, but that doesn't, that never took away from, from the woman's position of power in our community, even in the church. Women dominate the church and rule that church financially, as well as creating sometimes even the sermons, but then they put the male figurehead because in a lot of religions, males are the ones that are the, the main figurehead because religion usually is male dominated. Why don't you go to the question, Gabali? Where are the men in this activism piece? We're just going, and a matter of fact, I was about to go into that. The reality is that a lot of our men have become extremely passive because they become submissive because of white supremacy. Okay. That's the reality. White supremacy is not, is not something physically that you see. You see it physically because it dominates you. Mm. But the reality is that what happens is we, we automatically look for, our, for, for the man to basically be those that are, are fighting for us. But the problem is, is that in this society, the main focus is to take away the warrior class. Mm -hmm. They've already done that systematically. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the men now are literally in a, a neutral position as of what to do, even in their families. Mm -hmm. They don't even know whether they should even take control, take the lead, or just do what the truth says. Mm -hmm. You know. So at this point, a lot of our men now are basically not even having a gender. Not even because we have to literally go back to redefine our roles. Mm -hmm. So the male role now is literally, for the most part, non-existent. So basically, organizations that have existed for the most part from the Nation of Islam and the Black Panthers they re-energize that male role. But for the most part, the male role in our revolution is now becoming non-existent because of feminization. Okay, thank you. Men True. No, no, no. Where the men at in this active, in this active role? Where they at? Yeah, but it's, it's interesting. I don't see none of them. They, 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 I think the one brother we did see, he got cold clocked by some dude up in uh, <laughs> the Trump thing. He was a sister. Yeah. Oh, I'm, 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 I'
you know, I think also with the, the woman being the creator of life, she's willing to go a lot further for her survival than, you know, a lot of us are. Just, I mean, just right now, we just call it what it is. A lot of us are scared. Okay. All right, thank you. Sister Kunda, why y'all, what, what's going on? What's going on? Why y'all are in front? Here y'all go again. Don't give a man an opportunity to be the man. You want to get out front. That black woman, there you go again. <laughs> there on we the go. Taking, taking over. Taking over. <laughs> no, but. And, 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 and before you respond, and some of the things that we're going to talk about, we're going to put out, but we're going to definitely be solution oriented also at the end. So we know it's like a football game. You go up there reporting what the score is. We know what the score is, but what is the play for us to get to the dog on end zone? We know the story, so we kind of going on the score right now, but we are going to get to some plays in which we'll be able to go and score a touchdown. Because it's come with what's happening. How come y'all are out, out front? What's going on? I think I'm going to piggyback on what you said again. You don't need to pig here. Land back. You're land back. I'm land back. Land back. Yeah. No, no pig. Land back. Land back. Land back. I take correction. Um, but, but landing back. Lamb, lamb, L-A-M-B, lamb back, lamb back, I don't know, lamb back, not pig back. Salmon back, anything, anything, anything but pig. I know that's right. Okay, so I think it has a lot to do with value and vulnerability. A lot of times because of the not being or feeling equipped, sometimes not giving that responsibility, um, and and it's of course it, it's, it's it has to do with you know what we went through here in this country as it relates to uh, enslavement and that type of thing. But you know even today, uh, the the truth of the matter is a lot of African men don't feel valuable, um, and the responsibility they about that they're given all these single parent homes, um, mothers raising men. If I can, can give myself or just my family as an example. Uh, as a testimony, I look over, I look over my family, um, huge cousins, brothers, whatever, great aunts, children. I look at those, those genes and those lines. There is just as many men in our family as it is women. But I look at the strides that the women have made, um, and I come from a working class family, you know. But just even in <coughs> working class, as it relates to education, or just keeping a job, or uh, managing the family, uh, saying we're gonna have a family reunion. Simple little things where you've had opportunity to uh, have some sort of leadership. Um, it, it's happening and it's happening in a, a very loving environment. But then when I look at the men, you know, some of the, the spaces and where they're being um, where they're getting their affirmations. Some of those spaces are not the best spaces. They're out the box, they're in the street. You know, it's about um, how rebellious you can be in a negative way. Yes, so that's what they affirm. So how do you take that person who's been affirmed this way and mm -hmm. then give them a responsibility and leadership where it's, you have to have integrity and consistency and character? It, it, it's hard to do. So I, I kind of think that's why uh, it, it's, it's a huge step for them to go from um, street um, sort of leadership to I'm leading this community in a, in a, positive, way. In a positive way. Thank you. Sister Neve, Sister Neve, what is the problem with the brothers? And y'all always taking them front. Sister, sister, uh, as I said, we said kind of y'all won't even let the brothers do it, brother, brother. Uh, you y'all even let us do it. I bet your brother wanted to be the one. We said I got this. I bet that's what happened. What's, what's, what's taking place? We would like to think that's what happens, but I think uh, when it comes down to this issue, it's, it's two things. One, even historically, um, the black woman, even in Africa, the Ashanti people, Queen Yasantiwa, you know. Thank you for teaching us that because I went home and, and Googled her. You know, Queen Nanny of Jamaica, the Kandake Queens of Nubia. Always when it came to the African community, the women always held it down, even when the men were out in war or if they were even at home. Any kind of, any, any time it was an issue within our communities, historically, you see that uh, as African women, we've always stood up. So I think it's a part of our character, but also um, 
learning from Dr. Francis Prince Wilson, the man holds the genetic material. So with him holding the genetic material, he must be annihilated first. So I think with um, when it comes down to why necessarily um, we don't see a lot of black men in it, it's kind of like the young lady who was thrown across the room a, a couple of months back. It was the black women, the girls in those rooms that had it on video camera. It was those black boys at the very front of the classroom who didn't do anything. And it's not because they didn't feel it, it was because they were scared, they were afraid, mm. fear. You know, the black man has been, uh, so much fear has been put in him that even when it comes down to fighting the cause that he wants to fight for, racism, white supremacy is on his back, you know, the same way it's on our backs, but it's physical with him. So I, I, I don't necessarily feel like it's, it's black men aren't courageous. I think that um, just to the everyday life of a black man is very extremely hard. And then if you want to add a revolutionary mindset on top of that, that's like a direct bullseye. So I think it's a lot of fear and um, maybe not a lot of resources, but I, I definitely know it's black men out there. Okay, all right, let's spend that. Sister Zaza, what do you think about my contention? Y'all won't let us do well, nothing. Well, my first question to you is, Black Lives Matter was started by a lesbian black woman. Mm. So is there really a place at the table for a strong black man in that organization? Mm. Wow. Mm. That would be my first question. Mm. We can talk about that later. Mm. <laughs> All right, come right here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Bring the pain. Bring it. Come on. Oh, wow. Um, I take issue with this idea that there are no black men out here on the front line, because there are. You and the brothers who have taken excellent care of me since I've been here represent that. Mm -hmm. I have traveled all across this country and I meet black men everywhere I go that are serious, that are focused, that are militant, mm -hmm. that know what's taking place right now, that are taking care of their families, that are taking care of themselves and that are breathing life into our community. Right. The problem is that there are not enough. We have to understand the very systematic and strategic war that has been placed on black men. It is absolutely incumbent upon us as black women to step to the forefront because of the war that has been waged on our brothers, as Dr. Frances Cress Wilson teaches in her work, so that we can balance out the equation so that we can help them to get the work to where they need to be. With that being said, brothers, <laughs> we are tired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I feel that. I feel that. Tired, hurting. Yeah. Overloaded, overwhelmed, struggling financially, mm -hmm. emotionally, spiritually. And the funny thing about it is that there's some brothers in the conscious community, and I'm and when I say conscious, I'm saying RPG. I'm saying wearing the dashikis. I'm saying flying the flag mm -hmm. that are tearing our sisters apart. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. They come here. There you go. There you go. Come on. They hold microphones. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> they speak to our people about the black woman being the mother of civilization and being yep. a queen. Yep. And then they bed them and then they dead them. <laughs> That's true. That's know true. It. Which brothers is going to speak up about it? <laughs> Who's going to be accountable if steel sharpens steel? Right. Because yeah. we talk about the brothers in the hood, the thugs, the black boys the ones who are doing the sisters wrong. A lot of these mothers out here that single parents got babies by corporate brothers. Yeah. Brothers mm -hmm. who coming in here and doing the work on the outside, who won't do no work on the inside. Yeah. Accountability, black man. Yeah. Accountability is what we really, 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 really need to start talking about. Because if we have 70 plus percent black households that are headed by single black women, you don't have to be with a woman to be there for her and her children. You got nieces, you got cousins, you got women, women in your community who have children who you walk past every day and you are not doing anything to add to their lives. If you are the father of civilization, then what is your real responsibility? See, your father is a noun, right? It's a verb too though. Are we really fathering a new civilization to change this thing around. So when we understand how many black men are incarcerated, when we understand the effeminization of the African man, and if, you, if you've ever seen a brother with hot pants on and <laughs> in high heels with lipstick on, with a wig on, 
and you didn't get shook to your core mm -hmm. as a black man or a black woman, something is wrong with you. That's right. Mm -hmm. So when we look at all of the different dynamics of the war, the food, the lead poisoning in the water, I, I Bring it, sister. Thank, Come thank, on. Thank she will go more than that. Come on. Come on. Bring it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yo, she going to go deep. She going to she go, she go in. She going to go in. Now, let me, this is now, you raised, and I actually made a note of this, with 70% of the household being headed by a female, correct? And there's an expression, and so I'm going to start with you on this, this is a kind of, there's an expression that black women raise their daughters but love their sons. Mm -hmm. yeah. Black women raise their daughters, but love their sons. Yeah. So is it fair that if you are heading this particular household and you have sons and they come out of your particular household um, and they are, as Brother Ali, we're gonna go and talk about this, they have a level of feminization they're a little scary. Instead of them making their bed up, you make it up for them. <laughs> Instead of them going out and doing something because they said it's too hot, you say, don't worry about it, I'll go ahead and supplement your income with the, what they call an allowance. Um, is it fair? Oh, is it, is it fair that part of this, what we were talking about, this deficit of men being men, is the woman's fault, especially on the fact that you have a majority of the household that's raising these men. I wouldn't. Um... And then, and then, we had to, and then couple that with the fact that if you're in the ed public educational school system, 98% of from kindergarten, no, I'm sorry, 93% from kindergarten to sixth grade. Had our female teachers, and the males that you see are either administration or PE coaches. Mm -hmm. So you got it from the household all the way up to that child until approximately 10 or 11 years old, women. Go to that point right there. Is it your fault? With those statistics <laughs> that you gave you. Oh, y'all need to take those Of course not. <laughs> um, of course it's not a woman's fault. I mean, we each come here with a purpose, um, with separate gifts, abilities, talents, um, mm -hmm. and we do what we know to do um, with what we're given. So if the household, if there's 70% of the household where women are head of the household, then you run that household like a woman is supposed to. I'm looking at his earring, mm -hmm. the yin and the yang, mm -hmm. um, this balance. That's right. Without that equality, of course things are going to be out of balance. Right. And, but I think what's not also fair, what's, what's not fair also is that we don't deal with our society in a way that it looks today. Mm -hmm. we, we attack and we, we want our society to be one thing, but it's different. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about the feminization of, of, of men of black men and we we go at it as if we don't have the issues that we have today mm. and we even talk about fem feminization as if, as if as if to be feminine is not powerful mm. or not strong or mm. not is not for me. Now I'm trying to moderate this thing. Let me do <laughs> Feminization <laughs> strength is beautiful for a woman. Yeah, mm -hmm. It is. But I but I also wanna I, I also have to speak to I also have to speak to ahead, ahead. where we are and who we with right now. You have men in our churches in our <laughs> you know, all sorts of places who have the gift of music, who have the gift of all these sorts of things, and we, we use them for the gifts that they have. But in the community, we ostracize them. We put them to the back. We, we take our gay, especially the gay men, we take our gay, and obviously, 
African American gay black men, and we put them basically under our feet. We point at them. They're, they're already experiencing all the other issues as we experience in the African American community. And then we take them, if they decide that this is who I am, whether we agree with it or not, you know, their business, and we treat them in a way that is not loving, in a way that is not accepting, in a way that is not edifying their humanity. I ain't talking about all the other stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about their humanity. And for me, my belief is to build a community, to build a person, to build with a people, I don't care who it is, you started with love. That's how we were here. So no love is not puffy, no it's not saying, oh yeah, I accept everything that you is, but it is respect. It is acknowledgement, and it is acceptance in a sense of not you do what you, what you want to do in my house, but I accept you as a human being. And I don't point at you or ostracize you for the way that you express yourself. Okay, thank you. It's neat. Seventy percent of the households are headed by women. Is your fault? And the women's fault that I mean a nice <laughs> 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 Yeah, I gotta blame somebody. <laughs> you know, my dad uh, used to always tell me something. Grow it up. It may not be your fault, but it is your problem. Okay. Mm. Like, and I hate that about it. because mm. that that is the ultimate plight of the black community. Mm. It is not your fault for the reason why we are here, but it is our problem. Mm. It is, we have to come up with a solution. Mm. So when it comes down to the black woman leading 70% of the household, that's definitely by engineering. You know, there's a science to this thing. Um, on, on Monday, I got an opportunity to speak to some young ladies, and we were talking about the nigger marriage introduced mm. by Willie Lynch. Mm. And, you know, in the nigger marriage, it says that the black woman, or the nigger woman, of course, being frozen in her subconscious, afraid for her nigger male son, she will raise him in an opposite uh, behavioral system. Mm. So she raises her son to be a woman, mm. but she's afraid of him. Of, she's afraid for mm. him. She's afraid for him to be lynched. She's mm. afraid for him to be masculine because every time she saw the masculine man on the plantation, you know he got he got he was dealt with. Mm. So it's it's the very same way for a woman to um, experience racism, white supremacy in her youth. And when she has a daughter, she's going to say, hey, be sure not to do X, Y, and Z. Essentially, mm -hmm. the mom is going to teach everything to her children, even if she doesn't know if it's good or bad or not. So I don't necessarily think that the 70% of the black community being raised by women in all of this stuff is our fault, but it is, it is definitely a huge problem that we're going to have to address. And um, what it comes down is to black women having to accept that we can't raise men. You know, I think that's just something that we, we don't necessarily like to say. Mm -hmm. we, we like to um, say, no, it's, it's totally fine. You know, I might have just messed it up on this go around, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm equipped. But we see after generation and generation.